it's like a, you know, they used to be that the crown that on a king's head was a symbol of, you know, the points on a crown mm-hmm. were the symbol of um, beings in a in a kind of council that were guiding the person. And I think that the symbol of the mothership or the UFO is often the, the same kind of thing that you're merging into a higher level of consciousness. Now, if it has emotional overtones, then, you know, it, you may be dealing with your own emotional patterns in some way. Um, you may be tapping into an astral plane level of it. I think it, the, the UFO energy functions at different levels. Hmm. Can you say anything more about what, what was shocking about it? Um, having experiences seeing them in the, the sky coming down. Uh, usually with other people around me, mm-hmm. and um, just just being in shock, really, <laughs> like what is that? And it's um, there. It's been different crafts that I've seen in my dreams. So you're seeing them um, outside of yourself, outside of myself in the mm-hmm. sky, yes, mm-hmm. coming down. The way I would interpret that is that you may be actually connecting with the conscious that kind of consciousness but you're letting it come into your reality because they're coming down and in, you know, out of a higher level into your realm. So in some way, you're allowing higher thoughts to come toward you. So I would say this is kind of an indication that your consciousness is going to be opening up pretty soon. Well, and that was my second question, just if you had a, an intuition about my life's work or mission. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do that without a, a much more in-depth kind of look. Okay, excellent. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. Okay, Jen. Uh, absolutely. In in specific dreams, what's the old dream when uh, you're running, 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 and you're not going anywhere? What does that mean? Uh, it may be a symptom of a way that you feel that you're living your life right now, that um, you're just showing yourself that you're not making any progress or that you're wasting your energy. It's it's pretty literal, I think. Interesting. Okay, next up we go to Knoxville, Tennessee. Charlotte, it's your turn on Coast to Coast. Hi there. Well, hi there, George and Penny. Penny, I'm so delighted you're on the show tonight because I've been wanting to talk to you. I not only have your book Frequency, but also I came across another book back in February when I was out at the Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles where George also attended. Uh-huh. And um, this was a book written by a man named Dr. Walter Simke, which I'm sure oh, you're sure. familiar uh-huh. with. Return the of the Revolutionaries. Re- oh, the, well, this one is the Born Again one oh, about okay. you, where he profiled your cases yes. in his book on reincarnation yes. where uh, he was talking about the case of what he calls split incarnations uh-huh. where there were, I guess, in what you would call two personality fragments Parallel or lines. extensions yeah. mm-hmm. where you're the two different extensions of the personality from the soul essence is occupying two mm-hmm. different bodies at the same time. Yes. Uh, and that was of Charles Parkhurst yes. and Alice Carey. Yes. I would love for you to tell the Coast to Coast audience about that because I think that's just fascinating. Well, and I'll get it. off the line. Oh, well, this is an interesting book, uh, or books. Uh, Walter Simkew is a doctor who started doing research on reincarnation um, because he had been told that if you could find images of your past lives, that you would probably look very similar to the way you looked before, that there would be similar facial architecture and so forth. And years ago, I had had some readings from a trance medium who literally read the Akashic Records and read me the names of who I was and the books I wrote and when I died and who I married and all this stuff. And it was before the Internet. But I had looked it up a little bit in the library and found some little bits of information about these people. But when I met Walter, he was looking for cases. I said, well, I have, you know, some information about some lives I was supposed to have had. And by that time, the Internet was going and I looked them up and lo and behold I found lots of information about these two people and um, pictures of them and really both a man and a woman I looked quite similar to both of them which was pretty unusual plus as I started putting the, the story together of their lives and my life there were so many parallels uh, the woman was a writer 
and wrote under the pen name of Patty Lee. Patty Lee. And my name is Penny Lee. And there were so many things like that. I said, how could that happen? You know, it's just too wild. Um, so it's it's really an interesting case. It's on my website if anybody wants to read it. It's uh, uh, Return of the Revolutionaries is on my website. So you're probably like me where you don't believe in coincidences, are you? No, I really don't anymore. It, it, too many things line up, and it, it's got to be a function of consciousness causing a lot of these things to happen. Absolutely. Truck driving in Kentucky, Miles, first-time caller. Hey, Miles, to go. Good morning. Yes, um, <laughs> we had a situation this summer where we had to move out of our house. Uh, we were renting for nine years, and uh, they had a physical problem with the house, and we couldn't find anything. Landlord said finally that we had to go. We moved into a motel. Uh, my wife and I farmed the kids out to friends, and um, that weekend we went and looked at two places, and uh, one was a rental, one was a, a contract purchase. Um, the rental was real nice, and uh, we got the applications for both of them. Um, I went back on the road, um, got a call on a Tuesday morning saying from the lady with the rental saying that we could have it. Um, so I called my wife. She made arrangements to take the deposit check over. I got a call from my wife about 4 o'clock that afternoon, and she said, I can't go. I'm here about a quarter mile. She's right down the road from the house that I can't go any further. I just can't go any further. I said, what's the matter? Is the car broke down? She said, no, I just can't go. I can't drive anymore. It's just I have to stop. <laughs> but it, I'll, I'll call the lady and tell her that we can't take it. You know, it's, uh, you know, we've been looking for six weeks, and we were living in a motel. But um, So... Uh, <laughs> Next thing I know, about an hour later, the guy calls and says uh, he's going to let us have the house on a contract sale. And we moved in that weekend, signed the papers that Saturday. Um, it was just amazing. That, that kind of stuff, that kind of miracle stuff happens to us all the time. Well, Miles, you know, that's a really great example of what I was talking about earlier about the truth and anxiety signals. Because when you have an anxiety signal in the body, often... Um, energy doesn't move or you you have a repulsion from something or you, something in the body actually won't let you go there you know right and, yeah that and that's that was a situation because she she said she was just driving along and, and all of a sudden it hit her and uh, she pulled over and she just couldn't go down that road mm -hmm. was, uh, but the question I had was uh, on antidepressants um, hmm. I've been taking them for about 10 years I know a lot of people don't believe in them they think um, pretty negative things about it, but I'm pretty sure it's changed my life mm -hmm. and where we're going in the situation. Would that affect, or do you feel like that affects um, these, these kind of things, these um, uh, feelings that you have, the uh, vibrations um, and all that? Yeah, um, that's a really great question, and I think that, you know, depression and a lot of other kind of situations like that um, become chronic in the, the inner chemistry of the body, and they kind of get locked in for a while, and it's hard to get out of them just by thinking your way out. Um, and so I think that drugs sometimes serve as an interim way to disengage those chronic patterns, but I think that they should be a, a temporary, and that along with them, you can be learning how to raise your own frequency through working with your mind and through meditation and, you know, diet or whatever you do so that you can wean yourself off of it eventually. Because I do think that these things that are, um, you know, sort of stuck in the body can be reversed. Um, if you're getting relief from the other symptoms, I don't think that they get in the way of you, of your clarity. But if you stay on it too long, it's just like any habit. You, you stay in anything too long, it starts to block you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's go to Sharon in Phoenix. Go ahead, Sharon. Thanks. Hi, George. Hi, Penny. Hi. Penny, I have always followed my nose. I've been a little bunny who followed her nose. <laughs> and when I was little, my mother said, oh, it's just magical thinking. And I just told my mother, okay, fine, and ignored her completely and continued to follow my nose. And it's led me in the right direction probably about 95 to 99% of the time. But I have one problem.
says, I disagree with George, and I want to know your view on it. When I find that I, it doesn't work, and I go through a negative feeling, I don't find feeling positive puts me in the right place. I feel like I need to 